Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. And today I would like to tell you something about monic, epic, and isomorphisms, or just monic, epic, and iso. Um, kind of the most important properties of arrows in categories. So um, what you should think about is that they are actually injective, surjective, and bijective, right? Remember, uh, we, we call an injectivity at least, um, that injective, surjective, and bijective are really important properties of maps in sets and kind of arrows in categories to generalize maps. So there should be some analog properties and they're just called monic, epic, and iso. They're not quite the same, we will see, um, because you kind of want to get rid of this element description of things. And there will be some slight, well, catches here and there, but we'll see. So it's really a beautiful generalization of the standard concepts of set theory. So let's have a look. Uh, well, a reminder for everyone what injective is. So here's an injective map. So I have two sets, X and Y, and well, X has the objects one, two, three, or the object, I'm already talking about categories, the elements one, two, three, and uh, Y has something like A, B, C, D, and I stole this picture link in the description. I'm not quite sure why they decided to do it D, B, C, A, but anyway, so it has uh, the elements A, B, C, D. And this is an injective map. Why? Because every element on the right and left-hand side gets associated a unique element on the right-hand side, right? That's what it means to be injective. Here's an example of a non-injective map. What does it make non-injective? Well, those two get kind of to the same point. Um, more formally, and probably very well known to everyone watching this video, is, well, a map between sets is injective if and only if f of x equals f of y implies x equals y. Right, so f of x equals f of y implies x equals y. So here, f of x equals f of y, but those two are different. So this is not injective, not injective. And you could check here that this is actually injective. That's just kind of the point. Um, so this map actually on the on the left right hand side is surjective, but right now I'm going to talk about injectivity. So, okay, fine. That's a very important property uh, maps can have. It might take a while until you appreciate that this is a very uh, important property sets can have or maps can have between sets, but it is, right? So injectivity is one of the main important properties in classical set theory. So we always want to know whether a map is injective or surjective or isomorphism or whatever. So we want to do the same in category theory, right? That's kind of the whole point. Category theory should somehow generalize sets, right? So um, problem is my little description here, it's, it's kind of really bad for the purpose of category theory. Why? Well, it has elements and in category theory, just don't know what elements are. We don't really know what these are. We know, we know what sets are because we can think of the category of sets, but we don't know what elements are because they kind of sit on the, in the, on the lower level. We don't see them anymore. We are so far above in category theory. We don't, we don't know what elements are. So the description needs elements and that's usually really, really bad for category theory. So a, kind of an obvious task one should try to do here is you need to find an element-free description of injectivity. And this is how it works, actually quite a beautiful, and this is equivalent to injectivity, um, a, an easy exercise. Uh, let, me, let me just say an exercise, let me just not call it an easy exercise, I don't really know what easy is anyway. So an exercise in classical set theory. So a map between sets is injective, if and only if the following works. It's called, you can constant f from the left. So you have f g1, and you have f g, so g1 and g2 are two different maps. Uh, to other maps and fg1, fg2, and you can cancel it out. So this implies g1 equals g2, right? So this is kind of the, uh, you can cancel f from the left property. And this you can show, as I said, that this is equivalent to the classical element definition of sets. And this is how you should think about it. So you have this little diagram here and diagrams are great because now we already do a category theory. Right now we are still in the realm of sets, but here's a diagram. So we are secretly doing category theory. Um, so you have two additional maps, G1 and G2, and a map F, and you can kind of get rid of F and you can tell whether G1 and G2 are the same. So this um, description needs no elements, and this is just great. Now we are doing category theory. No elements, no elements at all. This is awesome. Um, so let's have a look at an example to understand how it works. So I would like to take the F as on the previous slide, 
which means uh, this f here. So one goes to d, two goes to b, three goes to a, right? One goes to d, two goes to b, three goes to a. And I just choose two random, well, whatever, kind of two functions I made up uh, from the set one, two into the set x on the, on the other slide and one, two. So I should put set brackets here as a set z in the, in the description here. So x is this set, y is this set. Uh, so there's also y somewhere and z is this set. And I just chose two different maps here. So here G, G1 sends both to two and G2 is a student permutation like picture. So if you want this merges and the other one permutes. Uh, so it's certainly not the same maps. And you could check that actually f of G1 uh, is B and F of G2 on one is D. So they're not the same. So you can't cancel F from the right, from the left. So actually F can distinct, F is injective and it can distinguish G1 from G2. That's kind of the whole point. That's kind of a baby example and you can just work out. And as I said, it's an easy exercise under the appropriate definition of easy uh, in classical set theory that uh, this actually is equivalent to the standard definition of injective, the element definition, which we don't like from the viewpoint of categories. Okay, so as usual in categories, um, now you can play the same game in kind of any type of category where even elements do not make any sense. So in my description here, this is just the element definition of injective doesn't make any sense at all here. We don't know what elements are. So let me recall how that works. So kind of my favorite example, uh, one cop where elements are those guys here, those are pictures, the string type pictures from a certain number of objects on the bottom. And the, well, a certain object on the bottom, which is just a number, so three, for example, a certain object on the top three, so another object on the top, which would be five. So here's also five, three, three. And here's my map F. It's just this permutation type picture. Uh, here's a map F and G is, as you can see, G, Gs are different. So how can I see that G is different? Well, this strand here, goes to here, while this strand here just goes to here. So G1 and G2 are certainly different. And now my injectivity condition, which I will call monic in a second, would be this one here. And it still makes sense. I can still check whether this is true. I don't know what elements are, but I can still check whether this is true. In my illustration, I should be able, because F in this case is injective, I should be able actually to tell that they are different and I'm just playing the same game to see that they are different, but now for the whole diagram. So if I start here, for example, this thing still goes to this point. And if I start here, this just goes to this point. So certainly these are different arrows and different copodisms, which means they're different arrows in the certain category. And the whole point is this, this notion of uh, being constable from the left here, this one, absolutely makes sense, no problem at all. The element definition, I have no idea how to apply it here. These are not maps. These are just abstract arrows in a certain type of topologically motivated category. So this is great, right? So we just generalized injective uh, in huge quotation marks here. So um, F is an injective map. So F is, if you want, is, is monic. I will call it monic in a second. Okay, so it's monic. Um, and that's kind of the definition then. I want injective, I want surject. I just discussed injective here because, because I'm running out of time, of course. But I want injective, surjective, so dual, and I need isomorphism. So let's have a look. Injective, uh, surjective, and iso, or bijective. So these are kind of the three standard, well, properties a map between sets can have. And um, the correct generalization, what I'm trying to explain here is this one. You could cancel it from the left, this picture, um, and they call, I call it monic. Right? Sometimes they're called monomorphism, sometimes they're called monic morphisms, sometimes they're called just monic. I just call it monic because it's short. Um, the analog of surjective, surjective morphisms are usually called epic, epimorphisms or epic morphisms, depends a bit on the literature. I just call it epic because it's short and it's a dual condition. What could be dual to be cancelable from the left? Well, if you think about it a little bit, it's you could cancel it from the right. So just really the same picture. And again, this is equivalent to the classical definition of uh, surjective in sets. Right? So I define an arrow to be epic if you could cancel it from the right, and I define it to be monic if you could cancel it from the left. 
And I will show you an example in a second why the generalization of bijective is then not, that is certainly not, that it's more like end epic, would be too simple, but you need a slightly different condition. You need the condition that you have an inverse. So there exists an inverse um, which inverts, so this should be an, uh, so this should be an X here, which inverts, so G times F is identity on X, and FG is identity on Y, which are exactly those two pictures. So let's have a, actually have a look. That's kind of the, the standard definition of, of injective, of bijective, not using L elements, right? So all of these are the standard definitions, not using elements. So let's have a look actually why we want the last one. It's a little bit tricky, um, but of course, in most set theoretical categories, you're kind of fine. Monic is injective, epic is surjective, iso is bijective. Right, so the last one, I haven't said that, the last one is called an iso or an isomorphism uh, in the category. It's an analog of bijective. So in any kind of set-based category, that, that's fine. We're up for the generalization. To, well, for non-set-based category, which is kind of the biggest bunch, if you want, in some not really strict way here. Um, but for a C as a buff, so this is a category, a very discrete one. It only has three objects that I call one, two, three. It only has three non-identity arrows. So I won't draw the identity arrows there here somewhere. So identity on one, identity on two, identity on three. I don't draw them, they're boring. I only have three arrows and they compose in the obvious way. So G, F composed with G is the third arrow here. That's a category you can check all axioms of a category are satisfied. So here it should make sense to talk about monic, epic, and iso. But of course, in this setup, it doesn't even, and there's no elements, right? It doesn't really make sense to talk about elements. So let's have a look. I claim in this little toy category here, actually all arrows, so all non-identity arrows, I don't care about identity arrows. I just, I don't care. They're not addressed here. Um, so all, so F, G, and G, F are all monic and epic. How do you see that? Well, there's no condition that if you check it, there's actually no condition that needs to be satisfied. So of course they are, right? If, if the condition is empty, so uh, then, then they are monic and epic. But none of them is an isomorphism uh, because you don't have the inverse map that you would need here. So you don't have an inverse map going in this direction as the inverse. It just doesn't exist at all. There's no error, right? So no, no, no error here is an isomorphism, except maybe, uh, of course, identities. The identities are boring anyway, are ignoring them. As I said, for well, here, everything is monic and epic and nothing is an isomorphism. So you have to be a little bit careful. Okay, so uh, monic, epic, and iso, kind of the most important properties arrows can have, uh, mimic injective, surjective, and bijective without talking about objects. And the only slight catch here is that injective plus surjective implies bijective, but uh, monic plus epic usually doesn't imply iso. The other converse is true. I should have said that if you have an isomorphism, then it's always monic and epic, but in one direction, it's just not true at all. That is just what always happens if you generalize, if you generalize something, there might be a catch and not everything generalizes in uh, the way you would expect it. It's just, that's just a fact of life if you want. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.